What is up, YouTube? This is Luke with Wilson Auto Detailing, and today's video is Wilson Auto Detailing's very first Q and A. Now, number one, if you have not subscribed to my channel or if you are new here, then number one, welcome and consider subscribing by hitting this tiny little subscribe, red subscribe button in the bottom right corner of this video because I come out with daily videos on not only how to maintenance your car, detail your car, but all kinds of tips and tricks for the do-it-yourselfers and for the professional detailers regarding products to use, tools to use, strategies to implement, communication skills, business skills, and so much more. Now, I have people write into my channel and comment on my videos all the time because I upload a ton of videos and people ask questions and give good input and I thought it would be beneficial to not only answer specific people online through comments but also to bring some of these questions to light to a bigger audience through a Q&A video because these questions are really good and a lot of people probably have some of the same questions so I wanted to dig in to some of those questions and give you guys the answers that I have based on my own research my own set years of owning a detailing business and my own experience. So number one, we're going to start with my man, MTM Infinity. That is how you spell that, MTN Infinity. Okay, now MTM Infinity asks, how often can you use spray wax? I wash my car weekly. Well, number one, great question. And number two, spray waxes as a rule are going to put a lesser layer of protection than something like a paste wax or a lot of cleaner waxes. So spray waxes actually as a rule should be applied on a more regular basis than other waxes because they're a little bit easier to remove, they come off easier, they're not quite as durable to the elements, and they're just not quite as heavy duty as a paste wax or as a sealant. And so Really, the simple answer to that question is you can spray wax your car as much as you want. You're certainly not going to hurt the paint by doing it on a weekly basis. You could spray wax your car every time you wash your car. I think another great idea would be you can spray wax your car, let's say you do it bi-weekly, and then once a week you wash your car. Well, in that once a week washing, you ought to use some sort of wash and wax product, maybe like Meguiar's wash and wax, because not only is that going to almost enhance and add a kind of a, a negligible, but a certain amount of protection with wax as you wash it, but it's also not going to strip the previous wax that you put on. So you could use a wash and wax product on top of of like a, a previous spray wax that you used last week and it's go, it's not going to strip that spray wax off and so if you did something like that there really wouldn't be a need to apply spray wax again maybe until the next week or the next but of course you can spray wax your car as much as you want you could do it every week you're not going to hurt anything and I like to spray wax my car with Meguiar's Synthetic Express spray wax at least once every two weeks because of course that's going to filter out the UV rays, it's going to protect my clear coat and it's just going to maintain the level of perfection that I want in my car's paint. So pretty much spray wax your car as much as you want. Now for this next question I had to come up to my whiteboard because it's such an awesome question and I got to dissect it a little bit and this question comes from my man Cameron Ricky, and I'm going to read just the last part of what he said. Basically, he was using a foam cannon to clean one of his, who was it, a family member's vehicle. Now, he says right here, I used a pressure washer with 3100 PSI power, then I went straight to the wash part, and for that I used Mr. Pink, which is a chemical guy's car soap. I used Mr. Pink in the foam cannon. I covered the truck heavily with soap and then I rinsed it. But once it dried, there was a light gray dust left on the vehicle. Could washing it in the sun on a 82 degree day, on a hot day, cause that? I just wanted to dissect this for a second because personally, I do not use foam cannons. And number one, that's just because in my business, 
for the past seven years I've been doing this and so I've been able to build it into something where I don't need to carry a pressure washer because I'm not dealing with cars that are just totally wrecked. Normally I have a lot of maintenance clients and I deal with a lot of higher end cars, a lot of higher end um, clientele or people with a healthy disposable income. So I don't really use a foam cannon. But as far as a foam cannon goes, if you think about the logic of it, with a foam cannon you have this car that you are, that's a sweet drink. Drawing. But you're covering this car in soap and you're not agitating it. And so the logic of a foam cannon is, well, I can knock the surface dirt off by using a high pressured um, kind of force cup with water coupled with solution or coupled with soap and that force is going to agitate the dirt coupled with the cleaning power of the soap. It's going to kind of bond almost to the dirt and then when I rinse it with water, the dirt as well as the soap is going to rinse away. Well, number one, because you're not agitating it, obviously the foam cannon is not going to get rid of all the dirt. And that's a common sense thing, and I know everybody knows that. But it's important to understand that if the foam cannon is used and there's no agitation happening, then for a film to be left over on the car when it dried, especially if you didn't dry it by hand, actually makes a lot of sense because the soap and the pressure is going to agitate this dirt and kind of work it up almost kind of at least to some level separate that dirt from the paint and then you're going to wash it but because there's no agitation in the washing process with your like your specific physical agitation and, there, and you're not drying it you're actually just letting it dry in the shade or something like that there's no agitation and so for a film to be left over from a lot of where that dirt didn't get kind of wiped off but only got worked up and it's not going to come off with just a regular rinse it rinse it's just a dirt dirt that got worked up but but not kind of taken off. Um, it's almost like the foam cannon worked against you in that aspect because if you only rely on the power of the foam cannon to wash the car, then it actually makes a lot of sense that there would be some sort of residue or film left over because of the lack of agitation in the cleaning process and the dirt's being stirred up but it's not being washed off or taken off um, with a microfiber towel or with a drying plush towel something like that and especially if it's a hot day with things drying very quickly it makes a whole lot of sense that there probably would be a film left over now my next question comes from my man mad wax and bro, I just want to say thanks for subbing to my channel. You've been a faithful guy. You've been here since like the beginning pretty much. You're the best. But Mad Wax actually brought up a point that I love because it's such a great question. He said, does the Tornador, Tornador work well enough with a small air compressor? And specifically the air compressor I use is a six gallon. I think it's a five or six gallon tank. So does the Tornador work well with a six gallon tank? Well, that's an amazing question. And my answer to that is, for what I do and for what I use the Tornador for, yes, a six gallon air compressor tank is plenty more than enough. You don't need to go overboard. A lot of times in the detailing world, detailers have this huge sense of needing the best equipment, the biggest, the most expensive, and that is just not the case. A lot of times that's an overcompensation for really not understanding the true nature of detailing. And so the six gallon air compressor tank is plenty for the Tornador because the Tornador has a max uh, PSI of 90 and so number one you don't need a big air compressor that uh, in order to get that kind of PSI and number two the recuperation rate or the um, kind of bounce back time of the air compressor in other words how quickly it recompresses the air on that six gallon tank that I have specifically is plenty it's it's plenty it, it recuperates just you know fine but it also needs to be understood that because the Tornador can only take a maximum of 90 psi it's not shooting all that much air at one time so a small air compressor is plenty because it takes a long time for the tornador to go through the amount of air that's compressed in a small tank because it's not shooting out air at, hu at these huge volumes that a lot of other tools are doing 
Now my next question has actually been asked by many, many different people, but I'm pulling specifically from, who is this? <laughs> Baller Brian for you. Number one, sweet name, okay? And number two, the question is, Purple power on wheels, okay? Can you use purple power on wheels? Is it safe? Will it hurt anything? Are there specific types of wheels you can use it on? The simple answer and the safest answer to that question that I'm gonna give is no. I would not use purple power on wheels. I would not use it um, even on the exterior of the car um, as far as like the paint goes. Just in a very general sense, I would not use purple power on the wheels in particular. Now why is that? Number one, there's a ton of testimonials about people using purple power on the wheels and I don't know if they're using it full strength or what, but it actually damaging a lot of chrome plating and a lot of aluminum. As a obvious rule, I would never use full strength purple power on the wheels in particular. However, are there certain situations where you could probably dilute purple power, something like seven to one, 10 to one, and use it on a wheel? I'm sure there are situations like that, but I just don't even go down that road because there's so many testimonies about it. There's a reason why Meguiar's wheel brightener is what I choose. It's because it's an acid-based wheel cleaner and it's going to react, chemically react with the brake dust so that you almost don't even have to agitate it in a lot of situations. It's so powerful, but yet so safe in 99% of cases. So as a simple answer to that question, no, do not use purple power on wheels, but you don't need to worry about the overspray from when you're cleaning the tire with full strength purple power. Number one, because the overspray is so negligible, you're barely getting any on it. And number two, you've already so wet the tire and the wheel with water that this, any, any purple power that oversprays onto the wheel when you're cleaning the tire is going to be so diluted with water automatically that it's just not something that you need to worry about. Now the last and final question for this video comes from a man at Rick's Learning Life. Number one, thank you for following my channel, man. And number two, I always appreciate your comments because they are always filled with great content. Now he asks, um, if I buy Chemical Guys VRP in the 16 ounce bottle, because he says I'm deciding if I want to use VRP, Hyper Dressing, or Car Pro Pearl. Now with these three dressings, they're all so great and they're all so similar almost that any route you take it's gonna be a good one so you definitely don't need to get caught up in trying to decide between one or the other and hesitating on pulling the trigger because any way you pull that trigger or point that gun it's gonna hit the it's gonna hit the target and it's gonna be good hyper dressing I do not use number one because I have chemical guys VRP that fills in anything that I would need hyper dressing for, whether it be tires, black trim, anything, rubber mats if you're into doing that, anything like that, chemical guys will fix or will Chemical guys can be applied to anything that the hyper dressing can be applied to. Number two, chemical guys VRP is also water based so it can be diluted with water if you want to make something like a wheel well dressing or something like that. However, hyper dressing and chemical guys VRP in particular are so similar it's almost in some cases it seems kind of indistinguishable or, or ridiculous to try to pick between the two. Um, the only reason I go with Chemical Guys, I mean literally the one and only reason, the, the reason I go with Chemical Guys VRP is because when it's applied to tires, it tends to have zero sling whatsoever, whereas hyperdressing, I've heard stories and have seen in my own experience, has a very minimal amount of sling in some cases. But once again, that's so negligible that it's just not an issue. Car Pro Pearl is actually something that I've been researching a ton and I will do some videos here coming up on that product shortly. But once again, it's another product that's just incredible, doesn't need to be overthought, doesn't need to be a hesitation in your world. Pull the trigger on one of those products and you're gonna shoot in the right direction. And you know what, buy one, go through it and buy the other and see which ones you like better and which ones work best in your world. Now once again guys, if you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner because I come out with daily videos of tips and tricks on how to detail and maintain your car for all 
kinds of people, not just the do-it-yourselfers, also the professional detailers, car enthusiasts, and anyone else you can think of. And guys, make sure you let me know if you enjoyed this Q&A video because I'd love to do more of these and really help you guys out with some specific questions that the majority of people are asking and maybe I can give you guys a more straightforward answer in videos like these. So make sure to let me know in the comments section below if you liked this Q&A and if it helped you and tell me how it helped you out. Guys, once again, stay up to date with my channel. I'm coming out with daily videos on how to and uh, all kinds of awesome, awesome stuff. And from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, I will see you guys next time.